Alrighty, friends, let's make this review. Mrs. Key. Given the angle and standard position, given the angle below, sketch it in standard position. Okay. Negative 20. So that's like somewhere down here. Goes that way. Two co terminal angles. So if I add 360, that's 340 degrees. I could add another 360, or I could go backwards and say negative 380 degrees. Whichever I want. 17 pi over 12, that's like 1 and 5 twelfths, which is a little less than 1 and a half. So somewhere here. So I'm going to think of this as I want to add 2 pi and subtract 2 pi. But in terms of 12s, that's 24 pi over 12. So 17 and 24, that's 11 and 41 pi over 12. And if I subtract, uh, 24 minus 17 is 7, so negative 7 pi over 12. If you're confused about the graphing part, as I said, that's 1 and 5 twelfths. That's 6. Um, if I thought about if I went here to here, that's 3 pi over 2. That's 1 and a half. So that's 1 and 6 twelfths, so a little less than that. <clears throat> Measure of the reference angle. There's lots of different ways to think about this. Um, I think I'm going to do it this way. That right there, that's a full pi. So that's 18 pi over 18, because that's one pi. That's another one. So that's at least two of those. That's another one. So that's three of those. So I did three total 18 pi over 18s. 3 times 18, that's 30 and 24, which is 54 pi over 12. Try again, over 18. Take that off of the 61, and I'm at uh, 7. So 7 pi over 18 is that leftover piece right there. That's one way to do it. Uh, another way would be just take the negative 61 pi over 18. Just ignore the pi. So do negative 61 over 18 and add 2. Um, or add 1. It doesn't really matter. You could just start adding 1. So if I get my calculator out and I say negative 61 over 18 plus 1. I get 43, negative 43 over 18. If I add 1 again, I get 25 over 18. That's negative. Then negative 7 over 18. So the negative 7 pi over 18 would, would get you there also. I'm sure there are other ways. Those are just ways that popped into my brain. I'm going to do this one. Convert from radians to degrees. So that's like 180. 180 over 9 is 20. So that's uh, 14 times 2, which is 28, so 280 degrees. What do I got over here? 190. Get rid of those. So it's 19 pi over 18. That is it. Ooh, exact values. Okay. So I'm going to think of this one as the sine of 90. The sine of 90 is 1. But negative 90 is down below, so that's negative. Cotangent is cosine over sine. I'm not going to think of that as 120. I'm going to think of that as 60, because that's the reference angle. So that's the cosine of 60 over the sine of 60. Cosine of 60 is a half. Sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Only thing we have to remember is that's the second quadrant. So tangent and cotangent are negative there. And then get rid of the 2. So 1 over root 3, but negative. 11 pi over 6, so I'm thinking pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2. And then 11 pi over 6 is in quadrant 4, because that's almost 2. So cosine is not negative, it's positive there. Cosecant is, again, sine. And the sine of 180 is the same thing as the sine of 0, which is 0, but cosecant is the reciprocal, so that's undefined. Tangent is sine over cosine. Sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So that's going to be 0. Cotangent is cosine over sine. 150, the reference angle is 30, so that's cosine 30 over sine 30. Again, that's in quadrant 2, so that's negative. 
Uh, cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. The sine of 30 is 1 over 2. Get rid of your 2s, and it's negative root 3. Sine of 120, I'm going to think of that as the sine of 60. It's also positive, so that's just root 3 over 2. Uh, secant is cosine, so I'm going to think of that as the cosine of not 2 pi over 3, but just pi over 3. Negative 2 pi over 3 is like here, so that's in quadrant 3, so it's negative. Uh, the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Flip it over, it's 2. Secant is friend, still friends with cosine. Cosine of 0 is 1. Flip it over, still 1. Cosecant is friends with sine. That's just like what we did up here. Um, so the sine is root 3 over 2. And so it's going to be 2 over root 3. And that's in quadrant 3, just like I drew over here. So that's going to be negative. Ooh. Simplify. I can do that. 7 pi over 6 is pi over 6, so that's 1 half squared. I don't have to worry about positive or negative. Technically, it would be negative, but I'm squaring it, so it doesn't matter. 7 pi over 6 would be root 3 over 2 squared. That would also be negative, but since I'm squaring it, I don't care. Uh, 13 pi over 4 is a pi over 4, so that's just like 1 uh, squared. Uh, 13 pi over 4 would be... 8 pi over 4 would be 2, so then you have 5 more, so that would be quadrant 3, so it would be positive, but again, we're squaring it, so it doesn't really matter. So that's going to be a quarter, plus root 3 squared is 3, 2 squared is 4, and then minus 1 squared is 1, so that's 1 minus 1, which is 0. Given the sine is negative 9 over 41, and cotangent is positive, so that means we're in quadrant 3. So negative 9 over 41. If you do the Pythagorean theorem, that will be 40. Um, and so then I have to find the other values. So if sine is that, first off, let's do cosecant because that's going to be easy. Negative 41 over 9 because we just flipped that. The cosine is going to be 40 over 41, but negative which means the secant is negative 41 over 40. The tangent is going to be 9 over 40. And the cotangent is going to be 40 over 9. Beauteous. Solve the equations. OK, there's lots of different ways to do these. First thing I want to do is just multiply everything by 3. So that's going to give me 3 plus 4 sine x, because that 3 on the left side will go away. 3 times 1 is 3, and then that 3 down below there will go away also. So we have this. Now I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I have 4 sine x is 2 root 3. Now I'm going to divide by 4. So the sine of x is 2 root 3 over 4, which is root 3 over 2. The sine is root 3 over 2 at pi over 3. And the sine is also positive in the second quadrant, so 2 pi over 3. It says between 0 and 2 pi, so I have done it. This next one looks like a quadratic, so I'm going to try to factor it. So 3 times 2 is 6, so I'm going to multiply to 6, and I'm going to add to negative 5. So that's going to be negative 3 and negative 2. So 3 cosine squared uh, minus 3 cosine minus 2 cosine plus 2 equals 0. There's another way to do this. I can wander through that if you'd like. Take a 3 cosine out, and I'm left with cosine minus 1. Take a negative 2 out, and I'm left with cosine minus 1. So I have 3 cosine x minus 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Um, this will give me cosine of x is 2 thirds. I can't do that. Um, 
This one will give me cosine x is 1. I can do that one. x is going to be 0. This one I can't do in terms of just doing it in my brain. I can estimate it, but I don't know the inverse cosine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my calculator to find the inverse cosine of 2 thirds. Um, actually, I'm going to do it here. All right, cosine of 2 thirds, and it's 0 0.841. So, and don't worry, I'll do a, 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 another example in a moment. 0 0.841. So that's my Q1 answer. It's also in Q4. Um, so if I do um, 2 pi minus 0 0.841, I get 5.442. So those would be your two approximate answers um, if you were stuck with, with that sort of question. But on your quiz, it's not going to be as scary as that. So let's go to pretend land. Pretend. Let's pretend we got to the cosine of x equals one of our nice numbers, like a half. We'd have to say, okay, so x is pi over 3. And then we're also in quadrant 4, so 2 pi minus pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. So like those would be your answers there. So you just have to list those. That's really it. That's all you got to do. Uh, and so that's what you're going to see on your quiz.